all right welcome back in this video i'll we'll go over how to use the q file dialog to be able to allow your users to open or save to files we will also look at how to create a simple notepad application after that that will allow you to practice using this q file dialog so to start i have just some starter code here this is a simple window with a push button in the middle that will allow us to use a click handler to then open the file dialog. You can find this example code in the GitHub link in the description below. I also have a folder here with files of with different file extensions. This is so that I can showcase some of the customizations with the Q file dialog later on. You do not need this folder, but if you would like this example folder as well you can find it in the same github link so to start we will first listen to whenever the button has been clicked which we can do by writing button dot clicked and then we can connect it to a click handler or call this self dot click handler which is a method i will create and if you're wondering how event handlers work within pyqt6 i've covered that in one of my earlier tutorials on pyqt6 so define the click handler method here and to use the queue file dialog or import it and i'll initialize that and save it to a variable called dialog we can then use the exact method on the dialog variable to execute the queue file dialog and to run it similar to how we run our application using app.exec So if we run our application now and we click on the button, we now have a file dialog once we click on the button. But when we open a file, we are not able to receive that. So to be able to receive the files that the user has opened, we can use dialog.selectedFiles and they will return a list of all of the absolute file paths that the user has clicked. So to show what that means, I'll print out this list. And if we run our application now and we open a file, we can see that the absolute file path of the selected file has been printed to the terminal. But here you might also notice another problem, which is that if the user clicks on the cancel button within the file dialog, whatever they have selected is still printed and this script continues to execute as if the user has opened the file even if they click cancel so to know if the user has clicked open to open a file or if you have clicked close to close out of the dialog we can actually store the return value of when the q file dialog has been executed i'll store it as a variable called dialog successful and i'll print it out to show what it returns so if you try and open a file it returns a value of 1 and if we click on the, on the cancel button to cancel all of the dialog it returns a value of 0 so from here we can create a if statement so if that return value is 1 then we can perform a certain action in this case to print out the files that the user have selected And if not, I'll just print out that the user has cancelled out of the file dialog. And we can actually simplify this line of if dialog equals to 1, the if statement automatically converts this expression to a boolean value and 1 is considered to be a true value and 0 is considered to be a false value. So we can actually just simplify this to this if statement. So if you try running our application now, the files that the user has selected is only printed out if they have double clicked on the file or clicked on the open button. But if they clicked on the cancel button, that part of the script will not run. Now I'll just go over a few options that we can configure on our file dialog. And the first option that you probably want to configure is the set name filter. This specifies what type of files the user can open. 
So if, for example, we only want to allow the user to open a PNG file, we can specify such a name filter. The asterisk at the beginning essentially means that the file name can contain any characters at the beginning, but it must end with an extension of .png. So now when we open the file dialog, we do not see all our files, we only see the files with ending with the extension of .png and those are the only files that we are allowed to open within our dialog since that is the filter that we have used. We can also specify multiple file extensions by separating them with a space. For example, if we want to assemble PNG and JPEG file extensions, we can do it like so. And we can also specify a description for this filter, such as all images. And then we can specify the file extensions within brackets. And that's something you must do if you want to add a description to the filter like so. And what this does is that if we open the file dialog, we can see that there is a description for that filter that the user can use instead of having to read through all of the filters to understand what files they are supposed to select and that can be quite useful. We can also set the file mode of our dialog and we can use this to specify if we want the user to be able to open a file that doesn't exist yet or if we only want the user to open a folder instead of a file. So we can set the file mode by specifying an option on mode. And over here we have a few options. The default is any file, so the user can open a folder, a file that exists, or a file that doesn't exist. But there are a few more options, such as directory, to allow the user to only open folders or existing files to only allow the user to open files that have already been created. So if we use the existing file file method and we try to create a new file and open that, we have an error within our dialog, which is really useful if we want to give immediate feedback to the user. And the default file mode is any file so that is, the user can select files that already exist or that they have just created or that do not exist yet. The last file mode is directory which means the user can only select files that are folders. So, so for example you can only select this example files folder over here. Alright since now that we have gotten quite comfortable with using the queue file dialog, I'll go over how to create a simple notepad application that allows the user to type some text within a text editor and be able to save that to a file or open from a text file and have the text displayed within the text editor. So to start, I have some starter code here. This is just a simple layout with a text edit widget which is used for the text editor as well as a few push buttons and that is all stored within a queue grid layout and once again if you would like to know more about using layout managers within PyQt6 I have a tutorial on that in one of my previous videos and I will also link this starter code for this notepad application and the github link in the description below and just as a side note, I have stored the text added as an attribute to our window class. This is so that we can access it later on in other methods such as within our click handlers. To start, I will add a click handler to our save button and I will specify the... And we can do that by using save button or click and then we can connect it to a method. In this case, I will call my method save handler which I will create below. And within this method, I'll first initialize a new queue file dialog. I will then set a name filter to only allow text files. So that is all files ending with an extension of .txt. I will then execute the dialog and store the return value so that we can check if the user has clicked cancel or if they have selected a file. 
So if the user has selected a file, open a new file, I will then save the location of the absolute file path that the user has selected to a variable. I'll call that variable file location. And we can then get the files that the user selected using the selected files method. And since this returns a list of the files that the user has selected, but we only want the first one, I will get us specify an index of zero to get the first file location that the user has selected. And before we write to that file, I'll just print out the file location to see what we're working with. And I'll also print out the text of the text added, which we can get using plain text, which returns the text that the user has entered in the text added as a string. So if we run our application now, we can see that once the user has clicked on the save button and once they have selected a file the absolute file path of the file that they have selected is printed and also the text that they have entered within the text added we can then write to that file using a context manager like so using with open and then we need to specify the file path which we have already saved we can also specify a file mode in this case, we want to write to the file. So we will use a file mode of W. And this will create a, the file if it doesn't exist yet. And it will override the file if it already exists. I also specify it as file so that we can refer it to that particular variable. Once we have opened the file, we will then write to the file using the dot write method. And we just write whatever is within the text added which we can receive once again by using the two plain text method and if we run the application now we can see that whatever we have entered within the text added is saved to the file that we have opened within the file dialog i will now work on the open button so I'll first create a click handler for it and I'll call it open handler. I'll then initialize a new queue file dialog and we will use the same name filter to only accept files that end with an extension of .txt. In this case, I only want to allow the user to select a file that already exists. Since they are trying to open an existing file, so I'll set the file mode to qfile.log.filemode.existing file. We will then execute the file dialog like we did above. And if the dialog is successful, we will also store the file location first. This time we will open it with the mode of R to be able to read the file. But that is the default file mode, so we do not need to specify that. I will then set the text of the text added using the set text method and I'll set that to whatever the contents of the file that the user selected is. We can do that by reading the file using the dot read method. So if we open the previously saved file, we can see that everything works and we can continue to save to the file. And the notepad works as expected. There are obviously some improvements you can make to this application, such as before overriding a file that already exists, we can create a pop-up to let the user confirm that they are going to override the file. But just keep this application short and simple, I'll leave it here. And if you have any feedback or other PyQt tutorials that you would like to see, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If not, that's about it. If this video has helped you or if you have enjoyed this video, 
please consider liking this video or subscribing to my channel to help my channel out.